Belinda Jernigan raked us over the coals this morning. <laughs> in a good way. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's producing change in us. Come on. Do you feel the shift? Come on. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. I am excited about this body of Christ that's emerging in this season. Come on. Amen. It's the new and improved. Come on. Hallelujah. That is uh, adhering to the foundational purpose and plans of God, what God had in mind all along. We messed it up. Come on. Hallelujah. But God is straightening it out. Amen. He's, I, I love how you said it. A time out. That's what we had. The pandemic was a time out. Amen. And that time out took a lot of people out. You know, but we're still here. Come on. And so that means that God has purpose and value for us. Amen. We are part of what God has in his plans. Come on. For such a time as this. Amen. He had to equal the playing field. Come on. Mega churches became minor churches. <laughs> oh, God. Amen. I mean, nobody could do this stuff but God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we're excited. Amen. And uh, it's just one church. It's no such thing as a mega church or a minor church. It's just the body of Christ, the body of Christ. And uh, we're just in these uh, facilities gathering, you know, but the church is much bigger than just this place. Amen. And just our little groups and our little crowds. And I'm excited about the ecumenical um, perspective, you know, of the church. And we're seeing the big picture and how we're all connected. Come on. Amen. White, black, brown, yellow. Come on. Amen. All nations. And this, this actually, this community is becoming a Hispanic community more and more and more. So we're believing God even for Hispanics and even maybe to have a Hispanic church. Amen. Uh, operating out of this facility as well. Amen. Amen. Because it's the church for all people. Amen. The body of Christ is for all nations. Go ye into all the world. Amen. Amen. And preach this awesome, awesome gospel. Hallelujah. Well, I believe, uh, is Pastor Arrington, where is she? Apostle Arrington. So she'll be coming along in just a moment. Amen. Come on, praise and worship. We're just going to keep, we're just going to keep it moving. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm just going to pray. Father, we just thank you for this afternoon. And even as we move forward in this portion, God of the service, we thank you, oh God, for how you've been speaking to us how you've been laying foundation and how you have been shifting and rearranging and breaking our old paradigms and helping us to see the new that you have so purpose for our lives. And, and we're excited, Lord, because you allow us to be a part of it. We get to be a part of what you are doing in this hour. And so, Father, we just say, let her rip. <laughs> have your way, God. Do what you will in our hearts and in our lives. And so, Father, we just surrender to you, and we say yes. We say yes. We say yes to everything you're speaking. We say yes. Yes to the shift. Yes to the change. Yes to the breaking. Yes to the re-educating. Yes. Yes. I so say yes. Hallelujah. And so, Father, take control as we move into this part and we just commit it to you in Jesus name we pray and believe come on let's give God a clap offering of praise as we enter into worship haven't you been having a good time come on let me hear you say you've been having a good time you've been you got a deposit God has did something for was it Pastor Journey getting amazing this morning she outside all modest, like, I ain't do that great. Listen, you did amazing. I learned so much from you. And so we thank God we got Apostle Dion uh, that's coming up. Come on, let's give God a hand praise for that. Amen. But how many believe that what God has in store for you is bigger than you've ever seen before? Ah, uh, I ain't seen it yet, but I know it's coming. And no matter what the devil do to try to stop it, I know that I'm stepping into something bigger. How many of you believe that? Well, we're going to sing a little song that is going to encourage us and cause our confidence to come higher, believing that what God said, he's going to do it. If he said it, he'll do it. If he's spoken, he's going to bring it to pass. Help. 
heaven and earth will pass away, but his word shall remain. Hallelujah. I believe yeah. every word you say. And I receive ooh, all your promises. If you know it, sing it with me. I won't. I won't be moved by what I see. I'll keep my eyes on what you show me. It's bigger. Ooh. Come on, y'all say bigger again. It's bigger. Let's do it again. Come on. I believe. I believe. I want y'all to sing it with us. Every word. Every word you say. Come on. And I receive. I receive. Promise, all your promises. Come on. I won't be moved by, I won't be moved by what I see. I'll keep my eyes on what you show me is bigger. Come on, y'all. Everybody, real big, say bigger. It's bigger. One more time. Everybody, say, I believe. I believe. Ooh, hallelujah. Every word. I receive, I receive, come on, all your promises, God, all your promises. I won't be moved by what I see, I won't be moved by what I see, I'll keep my eyes on what you show me, it's bigger, come on, everybody real big, say bigger, it's bigger, hey, come on, I will stand, Stand, I will stand still and see what you're doing. It will be bigger yeah. and better than ever before. It will be bigger and better than ever before. It will be bigger and better. Faithful rise right now. I oh yeah, all your promises. All your promises. And I won't be moved by. I won't, I won't be moved by. by I Come on, I'll keep my I'll eyes. Keep my eyes oh yes, I will. It's bigger. Ooh. Come on, somebody say bigger. It's bigger. bigger. One more time. I Y'all sing it with us every word. Every word you say. Come on, and I receive. I receive. Oh, yes. All your promises. All your promises. I won't be moved by. I won't be moved by what I see. I'll keep my I'll eyes, keep my on. eyes on what you Come on. It's bigger. bigger. Yes, it is. More than that, yeah, more than that, 
more than that. Everybody say, exceedingly, yeah, abundantly. Come on, above, above all that you could ask for. It. It's gonna be more than that. 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 Everybody say, exceedingly, exceedingly, abundantly, abundantly, above all that. Above all that. You can ask for that. Clap our hands and give God praise. Come on, haven't we enjoyed this praise and worship team? Come on, let's bless God for them. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. We're just going to get right to the word of the Lord on this afternoon. I know we had a couple other things planned, but we don't want to uh, hold up the speaker any longer. We value what's in him. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we don't want to wait any longer. <laughs> Amen. To receive, yes, come on, what God has uh, prepared for us. Amen. On this afternoon. Amen. We thank God for Apostle Dion Campbell. Uh, and the tremendous gift that he is to the body of Christ. I had the pleasure and opportunity of meeting him several years ago. Amen. Through Apostle Greg House. And, um, you know, and come to find out we had some mutual connections. And, um, and he's been nothing but a brother, a blessing, a friend, a man of God. You know, and I love him because he's not, he's not, he's not religious. He's not, he's not typical. He's, come on. He's just Apostle Dion, a man of God with a message come on a kingdom word a kingdom message amen let me get his mic there i believe there should be a mic here somewhere for him a microphone okay where's that mic that was over here that was us <laughs> okay all right all right we're gonna we're gonna get it set up for you Hallelujah, Apostle Dion. Let's receive him now. Amen. Amen. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. Amen. Just lift up your hands. Father, we thank you. God, we bless you for today. God, we pray that you open up our eyes so that we can see the future clearly and begin to build accordingly to that which you have shown us. Father, begin to open up our ears so that we can hear the frequency that comes from you. Teach us to still the noise of all the false prophets that are in the land today. Let us trust in that which you are showing us and have the confidence and the courage to build what you have given us. God, help us to understand that our authenticity is our strength. Thank you, God, for this season, and thank you for this time. Thank you, God, for allowing me to speak before your people, your leaders, and those that you love. We bless you, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Why don't you go ahead and have a seat? Amen. It was good to be with you today. Um, so thankful for my friend. Uh, Apostle Lorenzo and his wife, and we love them very, very much. Um, I love real people uh, that are just honest and do it the right way. And it, it, it's difficult when you do it the right way because there's not a lot of fanfare. You don't get a lot of likes on social media, a lot of followings, but that doesn't make you any less of an apostle than anyone else. Everyone has to stay true to their assignment. And this is a tough area to build in. Uh, you have to look at his longevity, his fruit, his fight, he and his wife. And you look at them that they are still together. That is a minor miracle in itself in this day and age. So we, we bless God for you. It is an honor for me to be here. This is actually the first time that I have ministered in 2022. Yeah. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit of that later. Also, um, let's, let's thank God for the gift that is among us today, Linda Jernigan. Yeah. I, I thank God for Linda, Linda Jernigan because she is fearless. She is a voice. She makes pastors nervous. She makes apostles tremble. She makes prophets hide in corners. And, and I really, really, really and truly appreciate you. Don't stop what you're doing. It's needful. It's shifting and it's changing our world. Okay. Um, I want you to get out of, I want you to get out of church mode. Can you do that? And I want you to go into classroom mode. And I want you to go into student mode. 
so that we could talk about some real things, okay? I believe that our world is in trouble and that the saints are stressed, that pastors are stressed and confused because nobody knows what to do, okay? So I want to talk a little bit about some reality. I want to talk a little bit about my life and how God has worked in my life and what I believe God is saying to you. So can we get out of church mode and just go into classroom and have dialogue? Dialogue is so healthy in the body of Christ. Okay. Let me start here. Um, I want to start here, here by dismantling church. Everyone say dismantle church. The word church comes from a word ecclesia. Yeah? Not to be confused with the temple. When Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my ecclesia, he was not talking about a temple. And I think this is a pivot point for where the church has to go and what it has to do. And if you have the courage, it's going to change and turn your ministry. Ecclesia was a secular term in the times of Jesus Christ. What, it, what he literally was talking about when he said, upon this rock I will build my church. Everyone say church. Everyone say ecclesia. Everyone say church. Everyone say ecclesia. The church was not the temple. He wasn't talking about that. Ecclesia was a secular term for a governmental entity in Jesus' region. You can liken it to like a senate or a house of representatives or a local uh, uh, council body, okay? When Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my ecclesia, he was not talking about the temple, okay? Remember, Jesus was walking with his disciples one day, and there was the beauty of Solomon's temple. And they said, look at Solomon's temple. Look at all the beauty. Look at all the grandeur. And Jesus paid it no attention. He looked at the temple and said, I'm going to tear this thing down. Did he say that? And I will rebuild it in three days. What he was talking about was the body and the movement from temple worship to people. So when he says, upon this rock, I will build my ecclesia, Jesus was talking about a group of people that would be placed in the earth as governmental officials for the kingdom of God, and their duty was to make sure that the kingdom was executed in the earth realm. Okay? He was not talking about a temple. And if you can take that for a moment and let that soak in and stop seeing church, Jesus wasn't talking about the temple. He was talking about his governmental ability to rule and reign in the church. The kingdom of God is about life. It's about people. It's about strengthening people to go ye into all the world. Everyone say go ye into all the world. Traditionally, we have only used that as an evangelistic statement. Are you all right? Some of the pastors looking at me like, what are you going with this? Okay, go you into the world is not just an evangelistic statement, but Jesus wants the everyday saint to go into finance, government, education, uh, social studies. He wanted us to go into every realm of life and bring the kingdom and turn the kingdoms of this world into the kingdoms of our God. Yes? And so the everyday saint must be empowered to infiltrate the world. They call me an apostle. I have never called myself an apostle. I don't even pastor a church. Yes? But the, yeah, but the grace on my life works in the real world. There's an apostolic grace on my life that keeps leading me to positions in the real world. My last position was the chief of police in Michigan City, Indiana, 
And my job was to reform law enforcement because of all the injustices that were done to God's people and people in general. And so the grace that we use to build churches, as we know it, is also used to engage all these demonic structures that we have sat back and prayed about but put no action into. This is good news for the saint because everyone has been trying to fight to get here when God is trying to send you into the real world with your giftings, your graces, your wisdom, and the same grace that we use to worship inside of the temple, God wants to take that grace and have it explode in the real world so that after the prayer is action, and action results in a change in all of society. Okay? Hmm. Okay? Everyone say ecclesia. We're called to be governmental officials. Our job is to impose the kingdom of God on every realm of life. In particular in this season that we're living in, and that's like uh, uh, where Linda Jernigan said, you can't do it alone. She's right. We are a governmental group that has the ability to execute God's judgment in the earth, and we are not designed to do it alone. Okay? So now we're in a critical time frame where the world is going topsy-turvy. You're going to see less of an emphasis on apostles and prophets, and you're going to see a greater emphasis on evangelists and teachers. And the reason that this is happening is because all the chaos that is in the world right now because of the arrival of Jesus Christ, the closer that Jesus comes, the more the world begins to shake, turn, tremble, break down, and absolutely lose their mind, and that's on purpose. So people are looking for God, but the church is too caught up in prosperity, making money, building this, building that, getting prestige, when there are multitudes of souls that are out there that need to be brought into the kingdom of God. Vis-a-vis, the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Yes, the teachers are going to be very, very important in this season because the reason that there's so much instability is because this generation, this church, has no foundation in God. Yeah? And if you do not have a foundation in God, you are subject to be seduced. Yeah? When you don't know the word and you're not, as the old school used to say, rooted and grounded, you are susceptible to anything. That's why many of you have fallen prey to false prophets with their signs and wonders and casting this out and it looks dynamic and everything. And in the same breath, they will tell you it's okay to have sex before you get married. Right? Because we don't know the word of God, then we say, but look at the signs. Look at the miracles. That means nothing. Yes, God will never contradict his word. And that's why the saints need education and maturity. Yeah? So the job of pastors is to be able to build against the grade. You cannot flow with everyone else. If you want to understand the times in which we are living in, the word of God said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days before the coming of the Lord. Noah had to build in contradiction to everyone else, and he built for a day that was yet to come. The future was arriving, and Noah wasn't building for the now. He was building for the sight of what God had showed him in contradiction. He was mocked. He was laughed at. They talked about him. But when the future came, Noah was the only one that was right. And that is the courage of leaders to go back to the original intention that God called you for 
and to stay faithful to that and to build it and not look left or right and try to imitate that which you see, but stay true to that which God has given you. This is a time of instability. Yes? Inst everyone say instability. So it's our job as leaders to build stability. Okay? I want you to think about so everybody good with me. We're dialoguing. Talk to me. Hi, how are you doing? Good. We can be supernaturally normal. Hi, how y'all doing? Y'all good? Kids okay? All right, you doing all right? Okay? Those are real questions. Shut up, bro. Uh-uh. No, I got to go home and build my life. I got to go home and secure my marriage. I got to go home and make my children love God despite all the influences that they have. Okay. Okay. I got a couple questions for you. Okay. Someone said you got to know what to build. In Noah's day, what did God need? An ark. So, he commissioned Noah to build what? How come God didn't tell Noah to build a church? Because that's not what he needed at that time. I'm going somewhere with this. In Adam's day, God needed a superintendent over a garden. Did he have them build a church? He did not. He had them superintend and manage a garden. In Peter's day, what did God want built? A church, right? So Peter built him a church. It's 2023, and the church will always be relevant. The ecclesia will all be, always be relevant. But now my question to you, and I want to get you to think, is what does God want you to build today? Are you still trying to build that which Peter built, or are you called to build upon that and something more? Yes, when God sent me, he didn't send me to the church. He sent me to the world. So my apostolic grace had to fight and engage the demons of an entire city and war with them to the point where they tried to kill me literally. They tried to have my son arrested and made up charges. And I had a group rise up and remove me out of there because they knew that reformation was coming and they said that I love the people more than I love the police. Right? And so I went, if you haven't heard from me in a while, it's because I'm recovering from being beaten very bad, badly and whipped publicly and shamed, but I'm still here. Yes? And it was in my death process and in them stoning me and killing me and me coming out on the other side that there is a fear in my city that that man has to be with God because they did everything in their power to try to destroy him and there's still a pending litigation where they made up charges on my son, just created them to try to get to me and to arrest him. This man is a witness to us. His, his mother is, was my assistant chief and they tried to destroy his brother as well. That's real. But thank God for the apostolic grace. Thank God for his anointing that even if they kill you, you will rise again. I embrace my suffering in God. For me, it's the truest sign that of the real apostolic is the ability to take everything that the enemy have thrown at you and to still keep going and make sure that the people are taken care of, and that they mature. Yes? That's why Paul said, I think that the Lord hath placed us the apostles last. This is not a glory gift or a glamour gift. It is a gift of death, and it's a beautiful death that those who really do the will of the Lord shall experience. So when you look at yourself and you feel like you haven't made an impact, because you're not featured in Charisma or in CBN, know that God sees your labor of love, uh, of love and great will your reward 
be in heaven. I've learned, Linda, to set my heart in Zion. They're misunderstood. People don't understand the things I would love to do, but I can't do because I have to finish that which God has given me. And so God wants an impartation of strength to come to the saints of Almighty God. And before I leave, I want to dialogue and talk and impart strength so that you can finish that which God has given you to do. I was mad at you, Linda. You preached on COVID, and I'm talking about COVID too. But it's not a competition. No, no, we're in partnership. Yeah, I have love for those that serve the body of Christ. And we are helpers one to another. We're partners. Yes, what I have belongs to you and what you have belongs to me. And that's the way you got to see it. We are not in competition. This is not a who does better than who. Man, that's for kids. Yeah, this is about people and strengthening the people. COVID-19, this is what... COVID-19 was like a training day for the saints. And God wanted me to bring it back to your remembrance. Okay? I want you to go back to COVID and understand some things that you were supposed to get out of COVID. Remember, we went from dependency on a church service to dependency on our relationship with God and one another. We were hooked on church services and we had no relationship with God. So one of the things that God wanted to do during COVID was bring you back, me back, us back to him and our relationship. And there was a reason for that. When God puts you in a training day, because COVID was a training day, when God puts you in a training day, he's preparing you for a day that is yet to come. So what he was doing was rooting and grounding us into the things that were important to, to him so that you can pivot and be successful in the times we are now. If you are not thriving and doing well now, it's because you didn't learn your lesson during COVID and you're going back trying to redo what God tore up. Why are you still trying to do church? like you did post-COVID or pre-COVID. When God destroyed that, yeah, what else did he do? He emphasized the importance of building home and family life and marriages. Yes? Do you know why? Because that was more important to God than a church service. Hear me correctly. I love church. Church is essential but family is first. The first thing that God did when he began time was he put a husband and a wife together because that was the core of the church. So family life is essential. So don't come back to church and forget about your family. Forget about your marriage. Forget about your kids. Forget about your essential relationships. Forget about your personal prayer time with God. Hmm. Yes? God emphasized personal purity. Yes, he broke masturbation. He broke pornography. He broke lesbianism. He broke homosexuality. He broke confusion. He brought us all back to purity. We were afraid and we learned the fear of the Lord. Now that all that is gone, we have gone right back to the very thing that God delivered us from. God told me to bring this back to your remembrances. At that time, you were creative. Yes? You start creating stuff. Have you finished what God put in you? There were businesses that he gave some of you during COVID. Where are those businesses at? Yeah? See, God took away all the noise during COVID. And now that the noise has dropped back in, can you still hear God's voice? Okay. Okay. Hmm. During COVID, we reduced excess lifestyles. Yeah? And now we're right back there again. 
during COVID, he highlighted the need for self-care. Yep, you still have to do that. Okay? Go to Luke chapter 21, 25 through 27. So the job of a leader in 2023 is to strengthen the saints. Leaders have to know what to do. Whether you're the leader of a church, the leader of an organization, the leader of your family, you've got to know what to do in the times in which we are living. And I want to correlate some of the things that are happening in the end time with what's going on with people. Luke 21, 25 through 27. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. So we see in the heavenly realms, there's activity going on. And understand that when activity is happening in the heavenly realms, it affects the earth realm or it affects what's on the inside of you, okay? Everyone say principles. Everyone lives by principles. Everyone say principles. Whatever principle you subscribe to, or live by is connected to a power. If you subscribe to unforgiveness and unforgiveness is on the inside of you, then that unforgiveness is connected to a power in the dark realms. If you subscribe to love, yes, and hope, that is a principle that is connected to a power, yes? And so you receive the fruit thereof. Whatever is inside of you will attract the type of power that is flowing through you, whether it be light or whether it be darkness. There shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. What this is pointing towards is people in the earth realm who are dealing with mental illnesses, psychological problems, all types of stress and instability because the heavens are moving in a manner because of the arrival of Jesus Christ. So what's on the inside of you will react to that, whether it be like or darkness, and that's why we see mental health at an all-time high right now is because the heavenly realms are being shaken. And that was what God was trying to purify in us during that training period when we went through COVID. Verse 26, men's hearts, men's hearts, failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth why? Because the what? The powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in cloud with great with power and great glory. The arrival of Jesus Christ is coming. You can feel it, right? And it's causing reactions in the heaven, and that's why people are absolutely losing their mind in this day and age. Am I telling the truth here? Am I... Yeah, are y'all understanding this? So there's, there's a lot of stress going on in the, in the earth and in the world today. Let me give you another scripture. Well, let me say this. There's a direct connection between the shaking of the heavens and mental stability. I want to emphasize this. Every principle you subscribe to is connected to a power. Somebody say, I know me. You know what's in you. If you're dealing with insecurity, if you're dealing with instability, if you're dealing with stress and worry, something's on the inside of you that shouldn't be. Yeah? Something's on the inside of you that shouldn't be. And part of the leader's job is not to focus in this hour on signs, wonders, and miracles, but it is to look beyond the flesh and look at the internal 
build quality of the saints that are under their care. Yes? Hmm. We have got to be people builders and be honest and use our voices to tell them the absolute truth. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that born of a woman was no greater prophet than John the Baptist. How many signs did John the Baptist do? How many? How many wonders did John the Baptist do? How many miracles did John the Baptist do? Why would Jesus say that John was the greatest prophet born of a woman when he did no miracles, no signs, and no wonders? By today's standards, he would be one of us that are building, yeah, that we, we embrace signs, wonders, and miracles, but the saints crazy and we know they need fixing. Amen? So, it's amazing. Isn't that an amazing scripture that Jesus recognized John? The, and you know what John did? He shifted the way, the mentality of people. He changed the way that they thought. Yes? So we can learn from John the Baptist. If you want to be prophetic, next time you stand before a person and start prophesying, stop telling them what they're going to get. Have the ability and the grace to see what's inside of them and begin to use your voice and your words to begin to speak and correct and align those issues that are on the inside of them so that they can live. Yes? Because as a man's soul prospers, he shall prosper. John the Baptist would say crazy stuff like this. I came to make the crooked places straight. In other words, John was looking at the internals of a person and say, you out of alignment, I got to straighten you out. And that's what Jesus recognized as a great prophet was the ability to bring people in alignment with God's word. John the Baptist said, I came to make, to lift up every valley. In other words, he was saying, I can look at people who are down and out and dysfunctional, and I'm going to use God's words to lift them up out of the low place that they're in and bring them up into wholeness. Then he used his words to say, I'm going to take every mountain and I'm going to bring it down. In other words, what he was saying is everything in you that exalts itself against God, my job as a prophet is to speak to it and bring it down because as your soul prospers, you going to prosper and your health will improve. A lot of people are sick because of sin, vis-a-vis -vis the sin, sick soul. Some of your ailments will not be healed until you rid yourself of the sin that you have. Some sicknesses are not natural sicknesses, but they are spiritual. And God wants to heal the sin-sick soul. Mm. Hebrews 12, 26 through 27. And now he makes another promise. <laughs> Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. All of creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things shall what? Remain. See this correctly. If God is shaken and you are shook, it's because what's inside of you is shakable. Yes? And this is a very simple message for this hour, but nonetheless, the foundation of God is true. Let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let's just go back to basics. The foundation, it will change your life. I don't need super revelation in this hour. You need foundational truth and building. That's what we need. When I speak to you, I'm speaking to myself. Yes? God is calling us to remove the hypocritical distance. 
between who we say we are, hypocritical distance. What we say we are. Okay. Is God ministering to you? Amen. I want to shake your insides. Yeah. And, and leaders, we have to build people in that shape, form, and fashion. Yeah, you put these things in place, then all of a sudden, everybody takes off. Yeah? We, we, we got to stop the, the charismatic activity that we do. We got to stop uh, entertaining them week by week because if you start off entertaining them, you'll have to keep entertaining them. Take consideration into changing the methodology of what you do on a Sunday service. Why not reshuffle everything, make it like a classroom setting, put up PowerPoint, have teaching sessions, talk about every aspect of life, real issues that people are dealing with. Take time to have dialogue on a regular basis. Yes? Are you brave enough to do something like that? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I love this graphic, and for leaders, it's imperative to understand how to build correctly, and this has helped me tremendously. This is an inside look at us, and there's three levels to this graphic. Can everyone see that graphic? There's three levels to that graphic. You'll see level one, which is in the blue, and it's called your spiritual core. Everyone say your spiritual core. Your spiritual core is where God's word is deposited. So one thing that our assemblies have to become is an environment of definition to where there is a constant stream of the unadulterated word of God so that God can tell us who we really are. You don't know who you really are until God speaks. Who you think you are right now is not who God designed you to be, but it's a culmination of what life has done to you and parts of it God. And that's why when we have to consciously understand that we have to build in a manner that causes God's voice to resonate on a regular basis and come down, God gets the opportunity to tell people who they really are. Okay? Everyone say level one. God's word. L level two is where you're at right now. <laughs> level two is where you're at right now. And we call that core issues. Everyone say core issues. Level two is the reality of what's on the inside of you. And take a self-inventory. What is on the inside of you? Lust, anger, love, patience. What's on the inside of you? So when God's word comes and it's delivered, it hits your core, which is level one. Your responsibility is that when you hear God's word, you've got to rearrange level two to come into alignment with what God said. Okay? Okay? Level two is the reality of who you are right now. Parts of it are God. Parts of it are demonic. Parts of it are your own preference. God's word comes to get all your core issues in alignment. So let's just look at, at level two with our core issues. Whatever's on the inside of you manifests in four different areas. So when we meet you and greet you, your core issues we get to introduce ourselves to them, whatever's on the inside of you. They affect the way that we think. They affect our personality. They affect our character. And they affect our soul. Leaders, mothers, parents, dads, when we're building and dealing with people, you have to understand this world that is on the inside of them. Yes? Yes? And so if you want to know the true condition of your church, take an assessment of the core issues. And the way to see clearly the issues of others is to first take issue with 
what's on the inside of you that is anti-Christ. Right? So as a leader, you got to purify yourself. You got to get the moat out your own eye so that you can see clearly and not have areas of blindness. Okay? Hmm? So when the heavens are shaken, then all of darkness's stuff on the inside of you gets all messed up and confused. And a part of you is gone and you don't understand what's happening with you and you become confused. Yeah? Now we got a deliverance issue. Yeah? You can use an imagery in the Old Testament that talked about there are seven nations greater than you, but I will drive them out little by little. When God delivers you, you don't get delivered all at one time. He takes a little by little, step by step, because on the other side, he has to develop the kingdom within you. Yeah? Yeah? That's why even in, when we were talking about demons, when an unclean spirit goes out of a person uh, and it finds no rest, it, it goes and then it comes back to his house and it says it takes with it some buddies seven times more wicked than itself. So there's a root issue that needs to be dealt with that can only be cured by the word of God. And if it's not dealt with, then you end up with seven more demonic forces that are more evil than what you started with. So our solution in building is to understand what's going on inside of people and stop playing church and start putting together things that would help them to deal with their core issues. Because once we deal with their core issues, it's going to change the way they think. It's going to change their personality. It's going to change their character. It's going to change their soul. And they will automatically begin to prosper. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of instability. The one thing we know about the word of God is despite the season, it's going to produce. Mm hmm Okay. Hmm. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Begin to talk to your people now, Lord. God, I thank you for the streams of transactions that are taking place, that you are talking to your people, that even while I was speaking, you were ministering to them, telling them what they need to do and what they need to put in place. Let them take note of those things and go home and implement them. God, we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. I didn't lose y'all on that, did I? Y'all good? Don't play with me. All right. Let me do one more thing. Okay. One more thing. Let's go to Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 3. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 3. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 3. Hmm. I love, this is my favorite scripture. We want to look at three things out of, out, of, out of these scriptures. Number one, God's promises for the future. Number two, an assessment and evaluation of you. And number three, upgraded and refreshed thinking systems. I think this is a powerful word for if you're questioning when you're in yourself, what can I do now? What do I need to do now, right now? Yes, to walk and finish with God. This is what I need to do. Yep. Someone say Jesus is arriving. Do y'all feel the pressure of Jesus is arriving? Yeah. And when the closer he gets, there's a burden on you to be just like him. That's the pressure you're feeling. It does not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he comes, we shall be like him. So the closer that Jesus gets to us, there's a greater burden for you to become mature. Yes? Immaturity has to be finished in the body of Christ. Yeah? Immaturity will get you in trouble. Yes? We are pushing saints to be mature. Quit baby and the saints. They can take it. Give them some elongated teaching sessions. Yes? 
Stop babying the saints. They can take, they can take it. That's you. You don't want to do it. They can take it. If you feed them a certain appetite, they'll get used to that appetite. Then they won't want all this fluff that you see on social media. Yeah? They can take it. Feed the saints. You want strength? Give strength. Yes? You want strength? Build strength. Yeah? Hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Almost done. Someone say God's promises for the future. This is loaded to me, and then I'll finish with this. I know it's been a long day. I'm thankful to be here with you. I really am. I really am. I love this. I really love this. I really love this. It's a, it's a difficult time in my life because I have another, God gave me another difficult assignment. I'm the executive director of the juvenile detention center in my county. Right? I went from chief of police to dealing with all the youth that are, and for me, youth is a micro picture of where the world is going. These youth are violent. They have mental issues out of this world. They're addicted. They've been sexually abused. I cannot believe what is going on, but it is a picture, and I'm thankful that, that we are there. I received a prophetic word about 15 years ago that said, I saw you in a school. It's going to be a reformatory where girls and, and boys were coming in. They were changed. Kids that nobody knew what to do with. I had to obey God's voice. And I would love to be planting churches, going to the nations, been there, done that. I would love to have my own network, want to build it, but can't, he won't let me. You know what he did? He told me to go into juvenile center and deal with these kids. I don't know about that. I don't know. I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. I don't know about that. God already gave us an example. One of the most high-powered prophets in the Bible was Daniel. Daniel wasn't in a temple with a robe on singing Hashanana, Roshanana. He was second in command to King Nebuchadnezzar in the governmental realm, and he's recognized as one of the most potent prophets there is. What about you? I'm never ministering nowhere. Linda Journey get ministered because her spirit get up on you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay. Let, 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 get this, okay? This is important. I've been using this scripture for years and years and years, and it's helped my life. Somebody say God's voice. Lift your hands and say God's voice. Say, God, I want to hear your voice. Keep your hands up. Keep your, a lot of things you don't have because you don't ask. That's why the enemy loved to, for you to keep your mouth shut because the kingdom of God is voice activated. And you don't get stuff because you don't have enough boldness of faith to open up your mouth and ask, you little quiet saints. Bless me, bless me. No, open up your mouth. Yeah, open up your mouth and say it with boldness. I have seen things created because I was bold enough to speak it out. Whatever God has showed me, you got to speak it out. Yeah, the enemy want to keep your mouth shut, but this is not the time. This is the season to open up your mouth boldly as you ought to and speak what God said. When I talk like this, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing because I believe that my voice sends tremors in the spirit realm. I believe you can feel it. There's something on the timber of a voice of someone that's sent by God that touches you deep in your core. Okay. All right. Almost done. All, all the commandments which I command. What verse? Yeah, okay. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do. Someone say instructions for today. Someone say God's voice. Look at what he's saying here. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do. God is telling you that when he, hold it, hold it down for a little bit, that when he speaks to you, your job is to put it in place. Hmm? All the commandments that I speak to you, 
He said, this day shall you observe to do. There are action requirements when God speaks. These are very clear blueprints for the church. Then he says, that you may live. Someone say, that you may live. What God is speaking to you and telling you to do, you implement it. And the reason he's telling you to do it now is because you're going to have life despite the situation happening in the world because his commandments will produce. All the commandments that I'm telling you to do, do it. It's for your good that you can live in the midst of whatever you're dealing with. Someone say that you may live. You should have a full kingdom experience despite the circumstances around you. Commandments, put them in place. Then he goes on to say, and multiply. When God gives you a commandment, you put it in place, it'll cause you to live, and he will give you prosperity, success in what you do. And go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. In other words, God is saying, look, pivot off my commandments. I'm telling you to do something. I've been telling you to do something for a long time. Why are you hesitating? Get rid of that dude with them big biceps and his broke self that ain't doing nothing but eating your food and your kids looking up at him like, are you crazy? Write that book God told you to book, told you to put in place. Give that money God told you to give. Forgive that person God told you to forgive. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do so that you can live. I want to prosper you and I'm going to finally give you your inheritance that belongs to you. But I couldn't give you your inheritance that you've been seeing since you were young in the Lord. I can't give it to you because you're not obeying my commandments. Somebody say promises for the future. Second part, there's an assessment and evaluation that God wants to do on you. He said, you shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. God wants you to remember who you used to be when you was nothing. You didn't know who you, we are, who you are, which is a wilderness, and he wants you to remember your journey where you came from, yeah? And he wants you to consider how he's redefined you, who you thought you were and who he says you are. Who you thought you were and who you, who he says you are. Huh? He said, think about the, these things. And he said, that process was to humble you. I took you through there so you would stop depending upon yourself and learn to depend on me. I had to remove your dependence on your money, your good looks, your swag, whatever was your mark in life. I had to remove it to humble you, to cause you to walk in a level of death to yourself because you depend on yourself too much and not me. And to prove thee to know what is in thine heart. Yeah, he wants you to think about the journey so that you don't go back to a default position because remember all the things you're trying to grab again now was the things that caused you to seek his face in the first place. He don't want you that when tough times come, you go back to default. When tough times come, I go back to pornography. When tough times come, I go back to alcohol. When tough times come, I go back to weed. When tough times come, I go back to hatred. To know what is in thy heart. That's what your journey is for. The removal of default position. Everybody say my journey. You own a journey. Just like the children of Israel went out of the bondage of Egypt into the promised land, you're going on a journey, but the journey is taking place in here. You're going from bondage in your heart to freedom. You're on a journey right now. Yeah. I want to know what's in your heart so that I can know if you're going to keep my commandments or not. 
Mm -hmm. So God wants to look at our maturity level. Everyone say maturity level. Okay, last part. As you go through this, verse 3, verse 3, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. What does that mean? What God, okay, listen. Leaders, saints, he humbling, he's humbling us and suffering us to hunger. In other words, everything that has fed you in the past that led to your dysfunctionality, I'm cutting it off. I'm cutting it off. People, places, things. I heard Linda Jernigan say, God is giving you new people. Quit trying to go back to the old folks, the old crew. Get you some new. God says, I humbled you and I'm allowing you to hunger. That thing which has fed you all this time that caused all your dysfunctionality, your sin, your failures, he's taking it away from you. And he said, now I'm going to feed you with manna, which you didn't know. What does that mean? God is taking your old resources. Y'all better hear me. He's taking your old resources, and he wants to disconnect you from that which was feeding you in the past and reconnect you to that which is called manna, or I don't even know what it is. It's a new resource. Someone say new resource. Someone say I will connect to my resource, God. That thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know. God also want to break all them strongholds in your family, them people, them cousins, your mama, and them who influences you in the wrong way and cause you to disobey God. That he might make you to know that you do not live by bread alone. God basically saying, look, I not only want you to have word in your life, I not only want you to have foundation in your life, but it's twofold if you want to walk with me. A lot of you know the Bible inside out, but that's your problem. Because the words that God speaks are spiritual. He said bread, but you also got to live by every word that is currently coming out of the mouth of the Lord. Okay, Deuteronomy, this is loaded. Yeah? So you got to have the word, but can you access the mind of God for today? Huh? If you want to live, he said, have that written word, but also tap into capture what God is saying to you right now, and that's how you're going to navigate. That bread sustains you, holds you, it's foundational. That proceeding word brings you into the future. Huh? God wants us ambidextrous. Yeah? Okay. Everyone good? Good. Lift your hands. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to turn it over to, amen. Did y'all get something out of this? Okay. Good. 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 I'm, I'm, hap I'm happy that no one is running the aisles. I'm happy that no one is falling out. I'm happy because that means we've tapped into this and we're dealing with this. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There are some principles in here, not because I said it, but because it's the word of God. If you put these things in place, it will change your life. This is the simplicity of the gospel that we have gotten away from where we think that all these charismatic activities is going to get us in God. No, no, no. At the end of these days, prophecy going to fail. Signs and wonders going to de deplete from us. But only what you do for Christ will last. Yeah, can we get back? Signs and wonders are beautiful. Great, I love it. Been there, done that. Yeah, I remember we were in deliverance ministry. We used to go places. Three years later, we go back and cast the same devils. Three years later, we go back and cast the same devils. I say, I'm tired of this. It's because people aren't being taught. Taught. Let the teacher arise in you. Let the teacher. Father, we thank you. We bless you for our gathering today. God, I thank you that beyond my words and beyond what I've said, that your spirit would touch deep into their hearts and that something would begin to stir on the inside of them. God calls that well of living water to begin to bubble up on the inside of them. 
Father, let your word begin to cascade upon them like dew. Father, I thank you that your word will not return into you void, but it will accomplish that which you set it out to do. Father, I just begin to release spiritual seeds in this house. Father, that would bring forth great fruit in the days to come. Father, begin to take that seed and embed it deep into their soulless realm and that it would bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. God, we thank you for your word that in the midst of an unstable word, your word is faithful, it's true, and it shall come to pass. Let this word be blessed today. Let this ministry be blessed and those that here be blessed. Father, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap our hand one more time. Thank you so much. Amen, Apostle Dion. Man. <laughs> That's all I can say is whoo. What a word to close this meeting on. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us govern ourselves accordingly. How many of you felt like you just kind of kind of grew up in the last 30 minutes? Come on. <laughs> Like, my God, what a mature word. What a timely word. What a sound word. And it's a word that I wanted to be released in this place. Thank you so much, Apostle, for obeying the Lord. Amen. And all, all of our speakers, they've all been in sync one with another. It's just incredible how the Holy Ghost speaks. But the most important thing is that we don't just hear the word that this is not just a good gathering. And I, I believe the word that we received have been so substantial that if we allow it to take root in us, it is without a doubt going to produce some tremendous fruit. I'm glad that who's here is here. You know, because we are the recipients of this, of this time and of this season. And I hear the Lord say, He said, mark this time. For it's going to be a time that will mark a significant change and shift even in, in your own lives. The Lord said, no, that even I've sent this word, yes, that you might move into a place of maturity that you've never known. And that is so uh, contrary even to that which you have been taught and that which you thought you knew. The Lord said, These are, this is a time of revelation and this is a, this is a season that I am speaking clearly. Yes, and I am speaking to the heart. And yes, and I'm speaking directly to my purpose in you and that that I would produce and that I would bring forth even in the days ahead, says the Spirit of the living God. For yes, change is among us and upon us. And yes, you shall see my glory. The glory that you sought to see and that you thought would come in the old paradigm. That said, the Lord said, no, but you shall see it in this new paradigm. And you shall understand my ways and my doings, says the Spirit of the living God. Come on, let's give God a clap offering for that. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, say it, Lord, I want to know your ways. Come on. Come on, say it, I want to know your ways. Hallelujah. I want to know your thoughts. Hallelujah. Thank God that old paradigms have been broken down. False altars and false temples and false things that have been erected, that we've been so accustomed to, they've been broken down. And my heart is this, Lord, I want to be that leader. Hallelujah. I want to be that leader that hears you and that speaks. And whatever that you've allowed me uh, to steward over, whatever people that you allow me to touch and influence, I want to be that leader that truly hears your heart and that obeys you for such a time as this. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the same. Come on. I don't want to. My God, I don't want to be the same. Holiday, your son, stand up, you and Carmen. And the Lord said, get ready for this shift is for you. The Lord says he brought you, and even the word that he's speaking, he's dealing with your heart about some shifting and some things. Hallelujah, but you had come to a place of just weariness of the same old. 
same old, same old. Well, the Lord said that even in this weekend, he is speaking to you even about the shift in that that he's going to do, even in the paradigm shift that he's speaking to your heart and mind about. The Lord said, listen intently upon my words, but yes, I shall speak to you specifically and clearly as to what steps to take next. But you will not be the same. You are not the same. And this change has been happening. You've been sensing it gradually. You know, gradually, even over the past three years, the Lord said, no, that I'm bringing it to full definition and full understanding of what I'm doing. And the Lord said, no, that you will not be the same. You will not be the same. For even as you attempted to leave early, the Lord said it was not for you to leave. It was for you to hear the conclusion of this so that he could complete that, that he is doing inside of you. And yes, no, that there shall be a fulfillment of all that that is placed within you. And even the vision that he's given you shall come to pass. For the vision is reshaping, yes, reshaping and taking on new meaning and taking on a new shape. And yes, the Lord said, no, that you surely you shall be one of those that shall usher in this new order, says the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, let's give God praise for that. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We got to get out of here. Amen. My God, I just feel a stirring in this room. Amen. Hallelujah. Just, just, just a very sober, sober, sober anointing has settled upon us. And we're leaving this place sober. Somebody says sober. We're leaving this place awakened. We're not drunk. Come on. Hallelujah. With emotionalism and, you know, and, and, and bad theologies anymore. But God is, is sobering us. And you know what's sobering us? And bringing that soberness is the truth. Truth. Come on, lift your hand and say, Lord, I thank you for truth. Amen. All right, listen. Uh, I mean, we thank God. We, we want to honor our ministry gifts that are here today. Come on, let's give them all a hand, our pastors and leaders. We thank God for each of you. And uh, so what I wanted to do this, this year was, uh, you know, to allow them just a minute or two to just explain who they are and what they're doing, you know, and, uh, you know, just take a couple of minutes to do that. Can y'all hang on for about... About, about six more minutes or so? Yes, all right. All right, come on, Pastor Goss. I think you're one of the ones. Did you go, you didn't go last night and, and, the, and Apostle Mims, just these two. Amen, and then we're gonna, uh, uh, Pastor Brenda's gonna share too. Amen, actually, we're gonna let her close us out. Amen? All right, come on, uh, man of God. God bless you, God bless you. My name is Pastor Sherman Goss. Uh, I've been pastoring for eight years. Uh, just thanking God, uh, our, our name of our church is our mission. We're loving people God's way ministry. That's our job. We just want to love people God's way. I thank God even for this conference. Some of the things I was dealing with, uh, even brought up in my church in Sunday school about some things about I want to be, a, I don't want to be mega. I want to be effective. And um, I'm about to question myself because I didn't see, I started stagnant. I didn't see any growth. And I feel like success could be measured. So you take what, you know, the business side of it. But there was some confirmation today with Pastor Jurgen, Jurgen and um, Apostle. That, that I just got to be me. And even just be me. Just be me. Because, like, I don't preach like normal preachers. I, like, when he said PowerPoint, because that's what I do every Sunday. I have a PowerPoint message. And we go through bullet points. And I, I, I will pop a quiz on you in the middle of Sunday service. And I thought, well, maybe I just ain't being effective. But that's what God gave me. So I'm just encouraged by just doing things the way God gave it to me. So thank you, man of God, for using, using you. And God bless all of you. Praise the Lord. Two minutes. I'm going to honor two minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've been in uh, the office of an apostle for the last 10 years. God has shifted my ministry. Uh, I've always been assigned. Uh, I heard the message last night, assignment. I've always been assigned to raise up prophets, not to teach them how to prophesy, but how to walk in holiness, how to uh, kill that flesh, because we can't speak for God if we can't hear from him. We can't hear from him because the flesh 
is not capable. Your flesh is not capable of obeying God. Recently, God has shifted me more to the community. Um, I deal, I deal with and work with uh, a collective of organizations that we do just we do uh, services for justice impacted individuals who have been incarcerated. Uh, we give them a foundation to go back and re-enter uh, into society uh, from the perspective of job readiness. Uh, we teach entrepreneurship. I teach health. And, I'm a nurse by, by trade. We teach entrepreneurship. We teach health and wellness. We provide mental health services. Uh, we provide um, lobbying in, in, in uh, Springfield. And we also uh, do financial literacy. Uh, we have got in the raw and in the thick of it. And that's what we're supposed to be. Uh, I'm also an apostle without the walls surrounding me. I believe that God has called me to the outside of the church. Uh, we can church to church all day long. And as everyone has said, they're going to still come out the same if we don't do something different. And so we, sometimes we just have to walk in love. So my ministry is that of love and nurturing uh, God's people inside and outside. Those prophets have to be uh, trained up to be able to hear the voice of the Lord. And I'm so happy to be a part of this network and uh, just, what can I say? Amen. Closing out. Oh, come on, give God some praise, everybody. I honor Apostle Irving. Amen, my beloved. Amen. He is mine. I am his. Amen. I honor all our ministry gifts. Pastor Toby powerful woman of God. We enjoyed you so much last night. Amen. And for what I heard, Pastor Linda Jernigan cut up. I, I, sorry, I had to miss that. And oh my God, Pastor Dion, I just said, I just take my whooping like a woman, you know. Just just take it, you know. Okay, now you got me here and then you, you know, but it was such, such, done such in love. I thought, yeah, Lord, let the righteous smite me. He should not break my head. But the word of God was so powerful, and it was just so what I needed. It was so much what I needed. Um, some of you all know, and he's all in what he said in our video, uh, know that we had branched out as another arm of Life Center. We're in Life Center, and we have branched out into a new ministry called uh, Rivers rivers of life outreach ministries and um it was difficult to make the move at first it, it really was i'm not gonna lie to you it was really move uh, because you you love people you know and it, it, you know how they tell you when you're getting married uh you're not losing a daughter or son you're gaining a son-in-law or daughter and so i didn't lose life center i gained some more children and they you know, it, 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 they're, I don't know what to say about them. I can tell you that when you're in the right place of your assignment, you feel a fresh anointing. You feel like you can do certain things that normally you couldn't do. And even though sometimes, you know, in the area in which I've been sent, I was in a training ground. There are times when the Lord had led me to come to Life Center, and I should have known that he was preparing me. But he led me to come to Life Center like 5 o'clock in the morning for prayer. And I'm like, 5 o'clock in the morning? But when I came to 5 o'clock for morning prayer, because I know some of you know that we had the sacrificial prayer at 7, but there were times when I was here at 5, and I would see people just getting out the parties. I would see people drug and high and all of that. And just wayward children, just young people, just partying. And this is almost the, the setting every day in the daytime. I mean, every week when I go uh, to Riverdale, they come in and hide. They come in there, um, you know, drugged, drunk, and everything. And they literally sit down and give me the opportunity to preach to them the gospel before they take anything from me. Preach to them. As a matter of fact, it's a required. So when they come and get their bags, I say, you know I got to pray for you. 
you know, I got to tell you something about the Lord. Oh, yeah, Pastor, oh, yeah. And they are so respectful. We've been doing this. Um, I think we were, um, had, about, had a 501c3 in 22, around 20, 22. What, 20? Yeah, around 20. Uh, and, and God just, when he, when he calls you to do something, he just, he just makes a way. We don't have time to tell you all the ways that it, in which he made. But it was a change for my husband and I. Amen. And you know what? Our marriage didn't weaken. It got stronger. There were questions, of course, because who doesn't want their bride to be with them on Sundays? But our marriage strengthened because he knew the call on my life and he respected that call on my life. And me, it was very hard for me to pull away. But you know what? I seen God move in such a mighty way that I couldn't doubt his leading. I couldn't doubt his guidance. I saw him move in such a way where people were giving into the ministry and giving to, because I'm like the one, like, if you don't provide, I'm not going. And I saw people just giving me more stuff than I could even, I mean, garage, basement. You know, and then just able to give it to those that are in need. It's been such a tremendous blessing. The hardest part, I must confess, was just getting up and doing it. And I suppose that because God had told some of you to do something. And your hardest thing is just doing it. Just obeying I kind of laughed when Apostle Dion was saying about juvenile, juvenile court, because I've been there 26 years, and the one in Chicago, and when COVID, and when it was time for us to come back, um, you know, to work, I was looking for retirement, and I was like, okay, retire now, Lord? It's like, no, <laughs> there's still some work that you got to do. And I went to the part where, where we have to minister, where we were ministering to them, like you said, the children that does everything, the boys and the girls, only to give to Riverdale. And believe me, crime written, I'm, this is not the good part of Riverdale. A director asked me, she says, oh, you have to go back to work. I heard it on the news. They calling all your government people back. She says, and I was just about to turn the young girls over to you. You know, they have no training. They have no, I said, give me the time, give me the day, give me the place. When you want me to reach those girls, I will find a way to reach those girls. I will make a way to reach it. You're not going to let me get in trouble with him anymore, devil. I'm going to obey God. I just saw down COVID. A lot of us pastors and leaders, we were dying, you know, because the Lord didn't got thunder. He got lightning. He got diseases. He got pestilence. I'm okay, Lord. You don't have to do none of that to me. I am going. Amen. I am doing what you called me to do. And I was like, okay, you just name me. I said, no, you just name it. And I thought, Lord, something else on my plate. But as the man of God was saying, time is short. And I know I'm busy and probably too busy for my age. But I'll tell you one thing. There is an urgency in the spirit realm that we have got to get the work done. We must work while it is day. For when night cometh, no man can come. No man can work. And so I'm thankful. And just like he said, on target. We're sitting at a, in a non-threatening environment where I'm just teaching them the word of God, speaking to them the word of God. And I even have to say, um, I have to excuse myself when I talk to them. I say, say amen, somebody. I say, y'all excuse me. That's my church jargon. Because I say, say amen. They'll look like, huh? <laughs> so some, do we still wear those clothes, right, in church? But. They understand what we just have to get down to them and feed them, spoon feed them, if you will, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what can I say? 
I'm not tired yet. I'm not tired. I'll go. I'll go to those girls. God has opened up an effectual door, and I don't even have time to tell you, but we have expanded already from the rec center, the park district, to one of the largest, and I mean the largest, if not the largest in Illinois, the largest in the suburbs um, where we're ministering to this particular daycare center, one of the biggest. And the Lord has blessed us with cases and cases of pampers to give to this daycare center because I'm dealing with parents that have to choose food over pampers. They don't even have pampers for their babies. Amen. And so again, that um, is the life. <laughs> it's, it's the Rivers of Life Outreach Center. I get just choked up talking about them. And we're all legitimate government taxes, tax exempt or whatever you want to say. So if you want to give, all proceeds go to that outreach leg of Life Center Church of Deliverance. Come on, give God some praise. I appreciate you so much. I give them some praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Come on, warriors, stand to your feet. Uh, amen. And make your de declaration uh, that you are going to go forth uh, as never before. We have been given our marching orders, uh, and we need to have a yes uh, down in our soul. Uh, we need to have a yes down in our heart. Uh, we need to surrender all uh, when the clarion call uh, goes out saying, Lord, uh, who shall go? Uh, whom will you send? Uh, we need to say, Lord, uh, here am I. Uh, send me. Uh, I'm willing to go uh, in the midst of wolves, uh, in the midst of snakes, uh, in the midst of evildoers. Uh, I will go. Uh, I will fulfill my assignment. Uh, I will do what you call me to do. Uh, I don't want to be lacking. Uh, I don't want to stand wanting. Uh, but I want to be faithful. Uh, I want to complete the work uh, until the end. Yes, Lord. Uh, come on. Yes, Lord. Uh, everybody, yes, Lord. Uh, Yes, Lord, send me. I'll go. I'll say it. I'll do it. What you call me to do? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Send me. I'll go. I'm willing. I don't want to be found lacking in doing what you call me to do. I want you to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on, give God some praise if you mean it. Come on, give him praise. Hey, I'll go. Yes, I'll go. Hallelujah. We love you so much. And we're so grateful for what God is doing, not only in the earth, but doing through you, his people in the earth. Come on, give him praise. Anything you want to say, honey, before I close out? Praise God. Just look at your neighbor and say, welcome to the new day. <laughs> I'll be the same. Come on, look at your neighbor. Tell him, I don't want to be the same. But we're getting ready to get out of here. Hallelujah. Welcome to the new day. I don't want to be the same. I'm not 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 the same. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I'm not the same. I don't want to be the same. Jesus. And 
So, Father, we thank you for all that's taking place in this room. Thank you, God, for the word. Thank you, oh God, for the shift. Thank you, God, for the impartation. Thank you, God, for the equipping. Thank you, God, for everything that you have released. Of. And so, Father, even as we leave this place, we thank you that we are not the same. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes as we go back to our respective churches, as we go back to our respective regions. Father, I thank you, oh God, how this word and this weekend shall produce much fruit. And thank you, oh God, for the substantial and for the irresistible anointing that we have received in Jesus' name. Now, Father, may your grace, may your protection be with us all until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Thank you all that participated in this. We thank God for our praise and worship. Come on, let's give them a hand. Amen. We thank God for uh, 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 Sister Michelle, Elder Michelle, and the kitchen staff. Come on. Amen. For providing the meal. Hallelujah. We thank all of our ministry gifts for your participation and just for being here and just...